Thank you. Thank you, Pekka. So good morning. So I was looking at the speaker list and I was figuring out that as a funder I should talk the be the voice of the society. So this will be the voice of society today. Um, I will try to put the perspective of the science in society and in this talk I will, I will first have put my views on, on why have we ended up in this transition phase as science is in today and then did you some words about trust, society's trust in science and in scientists. I think that is crucial and it's very important. As you can see from the title, uh, my talk will then be a bit broader than looking at that data citation. Another reason for talking about the society is of course also that in Nordforsk we haven't yet started to utilize that data citations. The, this, it, this is still in, in, in early. We, we are talking about open data, open science in Nordforsk, but as a funder we haven't taken this into account yet. So yeah, let me then so, I also have been in science, and uh, I don't know how much, and anyone doesn't know what Nordforsk is? Hi, hands up. Then I can, yeah, I, I can say it in one sentence. We are a platform for Nordic research collaboration. Then we go on to the next one. So, I want to go back to when I was a student, and there was this old, good old days in pre-2000, you know, when everything was good, we only had citation of our publications. That was a jolly good time. You know, everything was easy. We could start counting. I can say, okay, I have this and this many publications. I can even be a bit advanced and say, you know, I have three publications in a top level journal and people can say, oh yeah, good, good. That's very good. But, you know, and, and people looking from outside at the research community could see this kind of uh, harmonic, curiosity-driven society. It was self-sustained self in many ways and, and occasionally it would actually talk also with the society and say a professor with a grave look will say something important about the environment or climate and you know that this is, this is terrible or this is very good or whatever it did. Yeah. But you know being in science we know also that it, it, is, it, is not, it was not like that and giving a presentation, I, I always like to, to, to refer to one, one of my favorite phil philosophers, and that's Paul Feyerabend. And, and he, he really puts it very nice about this, what the scientists, why are the scientists do what the scientists are doing? And, and I like his quote in the, that the scientists, they, they have an aim and it remains stable, mostly, but it can very easily also change. It can be a result of an argument, it can be because they are bored, uh, this, this can be a, a, a kind of a dialogue or even impress the mistress. So there are many reasons for, for how the science has developed, I have to say that. And, and if you haven't read Paul Feyerabend, I, I would say that it's, it's, it's very, very good reading. And actually this subtitle is about, you know, uh, about, about more kind of disorder of science th than, than the order of science. So recommended. Okay, so I also come from, you know, earth system science, climate, environmental science. And I did actually generate a lot of data. And I, I could just refer to Sarah's pictures because that was, but that was the way we did it. You know, you went to the laboratory, you extracted the data, you put it on tape, and we had a suitcase full of tape coming back to the laboratory and put it on the local hard disk. That was how we did it. And the names were just as <coughs> useful as Sarah's were referring to. But I also did some practical work developing a numerical model. And uh, while being a student, you know, there were these rumors about some cheating here and there. Of course, always in a different department than yourself was working. And we heard some, there was actually these professors that were stealing the IDs of the students. So there was some kind of, also before we know that there has been cheating, there has been some kind of reuse of data, some fixing of data to make things look good, or even, as most people have done, I guess, under-reporting of data that didn't quite fit, which is, uh, I think, it's, 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 quite, it's quite usual. So, I think, you know, if you look at this, <laughs> so this was the situation, you know, also for me, even if I 
did the kind of a lot of my time was actually for generating the data. It was the data was kind of you know secondary or tertiary of, of your research. It was just there. It was a necessity. While the publications were, were the assets that, that we were selling and that we were using. Okay, but then something changed, and, and the change is not only the society, and it's, it, it's also in the, university, in the university system and also by the funders. Because, you know, after a while, there started to be this kind of number of appearances in media, dissemination to the public. So there was this starting to be internal push for starting to look at the value of, of what the scientists were doing. And it was value for the society, not only value for the, the scientists themselves. And, and we, we also had some other kind of values which were in, in the universities, which we also see today. It's how good are you as a teacher, for instance? And, and actually, in some universities, this, this matters when you are hired. It, it can also matter when you are, are, are getting these credits from, the, from your colleagues. Uh, but this varies a lot between different universities. So there is a not a, it's not a, a set or fixed or a uniform system. It's a bit random, depending on what laboratory or university you're working on. But, you know, eventually it had to be, you know, exposed cheating. And, and uh, being kind, you know, I only took a Norwegian newspaper, Swedish newspaper, and a Danish, not a Finnish. But of, of course, in Finland, this also has happened. There was this, there is actually cheating going on in science. And, and I would say, well, I called it arrival of winter. But I would say, in a way, science lost its virginity in early 2000. Or, or we knew it inside the science business, but for the society and for, for the general public, so science lost its virginity. People are cheating to, to get you know, professorship, to be famous, to, to get funding, to get money. How, how is it possible? So there is a broken trust. And speaking for the society, I would say we have to regain this trust again. So now I'm actually getting now towards the, the, the data citations. So what has happened? Well, you, you know, there has been an immensely increase in number of scientists. There is a declining availability of money. Uh, there is also this kind of uh, less respect in society. So you have to really show off some very good or spectacular uh, science results. So, again, talking for the society, then wh what, 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 what do they demand then? Well, they, they will need, they will want to know what, what is our money used for. So they want transparency. They want to have an accountability for how the money is spent. Is it spent in the best possible way? Is it trustworthy? Is, do the society get anything back at all? Which is a kind, of, could be a kind of a a, a bit painful point in, in, many types, in many areas of science. And if you look at what the scientists themselves, they say this is from nature, you know, is there a reproduci reproducibility crisis, as Sarah also touched on, and it was referred yesterday, there is in indeed a, a redu reducibility crisis. And that is, if it's bad in, in, in within science, it's even worse in society. And, and we, we really know that society there is a less and less trust in science and, and in professors. You know, if a politician says something, like in the Progress Party in Norway, for instance, stating that there is a political statement that there is no man-made climate change, then the professor can stand up and say, but all the evidence say, and you can ask the public, and they will say, well, you know, we believe the politician. And how, how can that be? And so, so there is a, we have a trust issue. As a funder, of course, we also, we also have well, not the same problem with trust, I would say that, but we also need to go and explain to the, to the policy makers, to society, how good science is doing for society. So we also need some similar kind of measures. There is another thing also uh, in the development. Since the World War II, you know, we have had, as I see it, three kind of phases uh, of, of this kind of contract to science has had with society. 
after the World War, they had this martial aid from the US helping you know, the Western world to, to take a stand in scientific development, which was demarking it from the Soviet Union, fr from, the, from the, uh, the, the, the Eastern side, which was a bit gloomy and, 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 and difficult. So there was a lot of building up competence in, in the Western world. And then we had the second phase in the, in the 60s and 70s, which were more for the society and, and building society for technology development, uh, building uh, knowledge that could really have economic growth, giving us prosperity. But then again, we have this kind of third wave where there is more of these grand societal challenges. That's where we are now. So we are doing, we should, or part of the science should be done to serve the society. Okay, so that is also an outer pressure for what science should be and should do. Science should also be done to serve the society and solve the grand societal challenges. And you know, from climate, for instance, this is kind of obvious. We have water shortage, uh, food uh, provision, and everything. And, and of course, the obvious one is this e infrastructure, you know, making it possible for us to actually make everything open, to access everything, to see what is done. And also then uh, a, 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 and any, any citizen can go out there and, 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 and see or see what is not done. But not because they understand it maybe, but they can see that it's done or, or if it's useful. Okay, so let me then go to the kind of the next part. Uh, now I, I, I try to point to some of these internal external forces that has put you know, this, society, this uh, science society in, 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 the, in a kind of transition as we are now. There, there is, I think there is a lot of arms and legs all over. We don't know he, really how to handle it. Should all data be open? Why? Uh, how long should it be open, etc. And, and, and probably the answer is probably not everything should be open, but we have to understand why. Uh, and we have to understand for whom, etc. So, in, in a way, you know, I, I, I try to be humble and say that funders, we are a kind of a mediator between the scientists and, and the funders. We, we are standing in the middle and we are collaborating with the scientists to get more money for science. But it has to be excellent, it has to be appropriate, it has to serve the society. And, and we are also talking with the policy makers to, to point out that, hey, here we have very good scientists. These are very good groups. We need to fund and, and, and keep these groups going because they are really on an international top level. And in that process, you know, there are transparency, it's openness, open science, open publication, open data, all these demands which is coming up. One thing that we are concerned, concerned with in this kind of situation is that it's easy now when we have all these the gender issues, there has to be openness, there has to be a data management plan. We have to make certain also that the scientist doesn't lose the view of the goals, why they are doing science. So there are so many demands coming in, so that is also something that we are, are concerned with. So when we are then re, uh, launching calls, for instance, and, and, and funding, you know, there has to be open publications, as you know, when it's practical. We have these gold and green standards, data management plan, open data. There is not that much uh, attention to the co-part, co the co-creation, uh, the co-citizenship. But it was also mentioned you know, in, in the questions about the interdisciplinarity. And that is in a part, this kind of, you know, including society or stakeholders in the view. Uh, but I, in, in a way, I think the co-word co is fine because it really puts uh, attention to, to the open science as such, even if you probably don't really know exactly what it is. Okay, uh, just a short thing also, since I'm talking for the society, I, I also should say some short words about can the society use the data and, and, and how can they use it. And, and actually, it's very difficult. It's very difficult for the society and, and, and the ordinary citizen to use data. It doesn't, it's not sufficient, even if the data has a metadata and is well described, you know, how, how can, how can a, a farmer use, you know, 
make a good use of climate service data? That, 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 that is a question. It, and it's not always obvious, or it's very seldom obvious, how good data are created for, for, for a certain user group. And, and we know that also from the climate challenge. We have been, you know, telling politics for 20 years that this is, this is really needed to be taken care of. There is a warming coming. Humans are an essential part of that, but nothing has happened, or actually, actually very little. Well, we have the Paris Agreement, of course, last year. The other thing is that there has to be data somewhere where we can trust it. There has to be a, a sustainability, long-term long sustainability. And I know also the science scientists themselves are very concerned with that. So this is, this is not unknown at all. Okay, so open science as a, I would not say a research method, but as, as a way to do research can actually be a part and help science and scientists to start to restore trust in the society, I think. There is, we can point to much more of, of, of the value for money which is put in, in the different parts of, of where you do the processes, from this defining the science questions until you have the publications. But in there, you also have uh, data which can be made available and you can have the data citations. So, why to measure impact? Well, I don't think the, the scientists, you don't have, there is, there is no choice. Uh, if, if we are going to still get money, or that is kind of putting it a bit in, on the edge, bed, but if we are st still to get money for science, science has to show, show its worth. And one of that uh, worth can, can be data citi citations, availability for data, I don't know. I don't know how, how important it will be, and, and actually I think that it is very dependent upon how the university and institutions themselves are, are, are putting it out. I think that it is internally in, in, in the science society that this w will, will determine if it will be useful or, or if it will be valuable or not, because it probably should be more or less as important as citations for publications. And me as a funder or, or the funder organization, we don't have much control of that at all, actually. This is the institutions and the university themselves. So, to wrap up, I guess I have yeah, a couple more minutes. Okay, so we have, or the scientists and the science society has to show their worth. It is very difficult to measure impact and maybe da data citation could be one kind of proxy for impact for society. I don't know. Uh, we have to, have to see, and actually there's a lot of work on, on impact and, and how to measure it. As we all know by now, the, the, the demand out there is that open data, open publication, there's, a must, there, there's, no, there, there's no way out of that, we, we know it. There has to be a reasonable cost to it. There is this debate now going on on how expensive it is to publish data. For, to the publishers, no data, I mean articles to publishers, uh, some of the high impact ones. It has really increased the last years. But it's also a kind of cost issue, how expensive should it be to do science, like overhead? How, how, how is it okay to have over overheads which are 700%? But that's another discussion. I think that the funders, like myself, we, we could have a, a, a med mediated role in this, helping showing the value of the science and, and, the, and the science done, both to, to the society and to the policy makers. So, as, as the title was, the kind of this open science and transparency, they are important, but I think it still remains to be seen, is it sufficient to kind of restore the trust to science, as I think which is needed after this, I would say, l loss of virginity earlier. Yes. Thank you.
Yeah, it was very interesting. Thank you. Um, I just want to ask one question about the previous slide where you said that um, there has to be a longer wait for exotic matrix. What do you meant by exotic matrix? Uh, does that is that are the me uh, metrics where you try to measure impacts, for instance, the kind of degree of innovation or uptake in policy, this kind of, uh, not the secondary, but the tertiary kind of, of, of deduction from how valuable science is. So that is what I mean by exotic. It's, it's kind of a bit undefined measures that we are trying to use to, to show value of science to society. OK. Yes? But this is not used by Nordfoss so far? No, uh, that is why I called it exotic also, okay. because it's kind of a bit, you know, it, it will be used whenever it, it is suitable, but we don't call it exotic, of course not. Okay, it was kind of more of a word wording. Okay, thank you. Exotic, yeah. yes. Okay, we could have another question if somebody... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I could actually ask ask one. So now, uh, North Fork is, is kind of very keen on following the development of uh, open research and open open science in the Nordic countries. And there was this report on yes. status. So I'm not so well familiar with the activities of North Fork. So how much of kind of the programmatic work is that to kind of, I mean, you, you can have sticks and carrots, I mean, yes. you can have a stick that, I mean, every project has to have the data management plan and blah, blah, blah. Uh, what, what's on, uh, is there anything on sort of the carrot side of activities? Um, well, yes, there is, not, not a big carrot, but mm. we have started some pilots on mm. for, for existing projects to, to start, you know, making some of the results and some of the data open mm. and explaining how they're doing it and, and oh yeah so and and what barriers they, they will meet mm -hmm. so and so there are some new money into it to better okay. that way so small carrot yes yeah. but uh, there are not many carrots in this and and it is we as a funder we it we don't want to go in to tell the scientists how to store yeah. or where to store anything but but we are trying to provide some money for them to choose yeah, where to store. Yeah, but you are, you are pilots and then you kind of distribute information and... So yes, so we are trying to, 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 to show how some, some groups yeah. are doing it, yes, okay. that we are doing. Yes. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay.